Hi, my name is Doris Lee and I'm a product manager at Snowflake. In this video, you'll learn about how you can build an end-to-end -end Python data pipeline in Snowflake. We'll be showing you how easy it is for you to connect to your iceberg table using pandas on Snowflake, perform some basic data profiling and cleaning, and then build a feature engineering pipeline using Snowflake's Cortex LLM functions for text classification. At the end, we'll show you how you can save this feature engineering pipeline as a dynamic iceberg table so that any updates to your source table automatically triggers the pipeline to refresh. And the best part, all of this can be done directly inside your Snowflake notebooks. Now let's get started. Okay, so here I have my Snowflake notebook open. Um, the first step uh, to use pandas on Snowflake is to import Snowpark and Modin, and then establish an active Snowpark connection. Uh, next, uh, I'm going to use p.readSnowflake to read this iceberg table called Restaurant Reviews Iceberg. And this is a data set of restaurant reviews from Tasty Bites, which is a global food truck operation that we'll be working uh, with today. Now that I have my data read into this DF uh, um, data frame, uh, what we're going to do is we're going to take a look at our data. Uh, I'm going to just print it out here uh, to look at what the data looks like. Um, uh, you'll recognize that each of these rows um, looks like a review with, with a review ID associated with it. There's some information about the review, including the raw text itself, uh, as well as the information about the food truck, its location, the date, and so on. So uh, oftentimes when I uh, first bring in a data set, I want to do things like df.info or df.describe to get a sense of what the data looks like. Uh, so in this case, I am doing uh, df.info uh, to look at each of the columns here. And this shows you uh, the non-null counts in each of the uh, columns. We can see that most of the columns uh, are filled with non-null values, um, except for the source column and then this customer ID column. And we can also see the data type associated with each of the uh, columns itself. Now, um, because this source column has zero, um, uh, um, sort of uh, all of it is none, um, we can also verify it by taking a look at that here. Um, and so there's not a whole lot of information there. So we're going to clean up the data by dropping the source column and then now when you print out the data frame, you'll see that the source column here is gone. Now that we've been able to clean up the data, uh, I'm interested in this column called primary city. So the primary city tells me uh, where the food truck uh, is located at. Uh, and I want to do a value counts on the primary city columns. And this tells me that uh, there's a lot of restaurant reviews from uh, food trucks in Seoul, Cape Town, Mumbai, Madrid, and so on. Okay, so now that I have a good sense of what my data looks like, um, as well as the um, uh, as well as having cleaned up the data, um, the next thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to do some feature engineering. Okay, so now that we have a good sense of what the data looks like, we've been able to clean it up a bit, let's move on to the feature engineering step. So Tasty Byte is a global operation that um, is across many cities. Um, we saw that earlier um, when we um, did the value counts on primary city. Um, and so what we're going to he uh, do here is map these cities down to a smaller set of geographical regions. And in order to do that, I'm go first going to extract the unique values uh, from the primary cities. Um, and then uh, what I'm going to do is use Snowflake's Cortex LLM function, classify text, to classify each of the cities into one of the following categories uh, that indicates uh, region. So it could be either Americas, uh, Africa, Europe, Asia, and so on. Um, and so uh, essentially what I'm doing here is I'm uh, importing the cortex function classified text, and then I'm doing a data frame dot apply. 
um, and then feeding in these four as input categories. I'm going to run that. Uh, I'm also going to run uh, this additional apply function uh, because the output of this is actually a JSON object. So what I also need to do is extract the label field uh, so that I can get this clean mapping between city uh, and the region label. Um, and you can see here just to, for a sanity track check, uh, Madrid is in Europe, uh, Cape Town is in Africa, Denver is in America. So all this looks correct. Um, okay, so now that I have uh, this information, I'm just going to make this into a mapping dictionary. And then um, what I will do is do um, take my uh, feature DF, uh, which is my feature uh, data frame, uh, and essentially map each of the primary city using the uh, map function, uh, the pandas map function and then uh, feed it the dictionary and then get this new uh, row of information uh, called uh, feature DF region. Now, once I've been able to do that, uh, I want to just visualize and see uh, what's the number of uh, counts associated with each of the regions. So I'm uh, going to do a plot in Altair to show that. Uh, so now here, this a uh, horizontal bar chart shows us the number of reviews by region. Um, and that is indicated by each of these bars. Okay, so uh, now that we've been able to see that, uh, I'm just going to print out my feature DF um, and show you that uh, there is now an additional column uh, region that has been added uh, to this feature data frame. We now want to save this feature engineering pipeline uh, as a table. And so since we started with an iceberg table, I'm first going to show you how you can save um, this, uh, the, the resulting uh, data frame as a new iceberg table. Uh, so here in the iceberg config, I'm providing uh, the, the catalog information, uh, external volume, and file location settings. Um, and then I'm going to use the to iceberg uh, functionality. Um, in pandas and on Snowflake um, to save it back as an iceberg table. Uh, and I pass in these uh, iceberg config. So this is how you save um, uh, something like a data frame into an iceberg table. Now, here comes a really powerful part. Um, so what if I am working with data um, that is changing? Let's say I have new restaurant reviews that is constantly being streamed in or um, you know, I have new data that's coming, uh, that's changing the source table. Now we wanna make sure that our downstream table gets updated as new data comes in. So in order to achieve this, uh, we can save this table as a dynamic iceberg table. Dynamic tables in Snowflake automatically hand handles the orchestration, scheduling, and refreshing um, of your pipelines. Uh, based on your spe specified uh, data freshness targets. So you don't have to worry about uh, orchestrating your, your pipeline. Um, so the way we do that here is with uh, pandas uh, on Snowflake, um, I can take this feature DF, um, I do two dynamic table to save it as a dynamic uh, table. In this case, uh, because I'm passing in an iceberg config. Uh, this is also a dynamic iceberg table. Um, and then I'm going to specify that the data freshness target is one minute, um, pass in the warehouse. And then finally, uh, this last bit here, I'm specifying the refresh most, uh, mode as incremental so that um, Snowflake knows that um, it it should uh, analyze and look at the query and, and calculate the difference, like the diff, um, that is associated with the update and merge back these changes um, that is uh, that has happened since the last refresh. Um, so the reason why this is really useful is that this avoids a full refresh on the table. Um, so you don't need to do a refresh on the full table unless it's necessary. It's only going to update the rows that have changed. Um, and so we're going to see an example of this in action. So cool. So let me run this now. Um, and so that we have a dynamic table, a dynamic iceberg table that is created here. Um, cool. So now that we have a dynamic iceberg uh, table, 
Um, I want to show you an example of uh, what happens if I decide to insert 10 rows into our original uh, iceberg table source. Great, so now that we have a dynamic table, um, let's test it and see it in action. Um, so before we uh, get started, uh, I want to go to the snow site uh, UI and take a look at my dynamic table. Um, so this is what my dynamic table looks like. Um, you can see that uh, this is the table specification. I uh, specified that this should be uh, an incremental refresh. The target freshness is one minute. Um, and this is also the table definition. So note that I didn't write any of the SQL query. All of this was generated based on the pandas code that I wrote uh, in my notebook. Um, and so this is just part of the um, uh, table definition for my dynamic iceberg table. Um, the other thing I want to show you here is uh, the refresh history. The refresh history tells you when uh, the um, uh, refresh has been done. So you can see here we have one row. Um, this is the initialization. Uh, so there's 124k rows in this data set. So in the first creation of the uh, dynamic table, um, all of these rows have changed. Uh, all of these rows have been added. Now let's go back uh, to our code um, and uh, run this command, which essentially inserts 10 new rows uh, into our um, original iceberg table source. Um, the thing that I wanna call out here is this is uh, not the dynamic table that we created. This was actually the original iceberg table source uh, that, we, um, that we did read Snowflake on at the very beginning of this demo. Um, and so what this is doing is saying, hey, I want to insert 10 rows into uh, my, my source table. And so what we would expect from doing this action here is that any changes to the source table should automatically sort of trigger a refresh uh, on my dynamic iceberg table. Um, and, and we should see some changes to, to our output table. Okay, so now I have done that. And we can see that the 10 rows have been inserted. Um, let's go back and um, we can run this uh, to refresh. Um, and you can see that um, here, after I've uh, been able to run the inserts, um, the rows that have changed is 10. Um, so this is a really uh, efficient way of updating your table. Obviously we, we inserted 10 rows, so th this shows that 10 rows have changed. Um, now, the naive way of doing this is, is a full refresh, right? So we run the pipeline over and over again in full on the full data set um, every, time, uh, every time there is a change to the source data. But notice how Snowflake is doing something a lot more intelligent here, where we only need to update the rows uh, that have changed. Um, and just to prove to you that this actually refreshed the, uh, the dynamic table, uh, let's go back here. And then if we do a select from query uh, based on the 10 rows that I've just inserted, um, you can see that uh, the new region column has been created. Um, so this is uh, how you can create a dynamic iceberg table. Um, and when you, uh, when you get uh, any upstream changes uh, to your source table, um, and, and have it incrementally refresh uh, your dynamic iceberg table. And that's it. In this video, we walk through an end-to-end -end example of how you can build a Python data pipeline, starting from an iceberg source table, doing some basic data profiling, cleaning, and feature engineering using pandas on Snowflake, and then finally saving the resulting pipeline as a dynamic iceberg table that incrementally refreshes as your source data changes. I hope this demo gives you a sense of how powerful and easy it is to build robust Python pipelines directly within Snowflake using familiar Pandas syntax. Thanks for watching, and be sure to check out more videos like this in our Snowflake Developers channel.